In this video I'd like to describe the controller for the Dueling 612's uh, transceiver and it's based on the Park SIGGEN and it's been repurposed uh, to control the Dueling 612's. What I'd first like to discuss is the connection uh, from the SIGGEN board here over to the Dueling 612's uh, transceiver board. This shows a summary of the uh, pins on the uh, Arduino uh, SIGGEN board and how those pins are connected to the uh, Dueling 612 uh, board. So if you look at uh, uh, pin A0, uh, that's connected to the S meter circuit. Pin A1 is connected to the forward power. Pin A2 is connected to the reverse power, so that'll determine SWR and power. Pin D9 is connected to the uh, microcontroller, that's an output that's going to the microcontroller uh, uh, socket of the Dueling 612. And then pin D9 is the actual P, uh, push to talk in, so that'll be connected to your mic's uh, push to talk. And when that pin gets grounded, it puts a voltage out on uh, D9 which activates the circuit, activates the relay and activates the push to talk circuit. Pins uh, A0, A1, A2 are of course uh, uh, ADC, they're analog pins and they're reading uh, voltages that's coming back from the board. And this is showing the uh, connector on the Arduino SIGGEN and it's showing how I connected the various wires that go back to the um, Dueling 612's uh, board. So in terms of the actual connections from the controller to the uh, Dueling 612 boards, I'd just like to point out uh, where the various connections are. Here's the, you could see there's a little microcontroller symbol there. So that's the output um, or, or the input to the board so the, mic, the, the controller, the Arduino controller when push to talk is enabled it puts a 5 volt signal here it, it turns this transistor on grounds the relay and so the push to talk uh, relay is engaged and power is uh, shifted from the receive chain to the transmit chain the bridge is connected to uh, ADC A1 and ADC pin A2. So here's the forward uh, power reading and the reverse power reading. So these two wires here are connected to the forward power is connected to pin A's A1 and the reverse power is connected to pin A2. Then you've got the uh, S meter signal here. That's uh, this wire here. That's going to the output of the S meter circuit and that's connected to pin A0 on the controller board. So the first thing we'll do is we will reset the um, controller by doing a long press on the rotary encoder and you'll notice the version of the software code and it comes up into the last frequency that was used so the way the screen is set up here is that you've got the first line is showing you the mode you're in, you're in receive mode, RX mode it's uh, showing you the uh, VFO, so right now it's using VFOA it's showing the frequency of VFOA and the mode. It's in uh, upper sideband. Uh, the next line is showing you the S meter display as a bar chart and it's giving you a numerical um, display of what the uh, S unit is. So right now it's showing an S unit of 1. The next line is, is for VFOB. So it's saying it's VFOB. That's the frequency of VFOB and it's telling you the band 
that's associated with VFOA. So it's a little bit, might be a little bit misleading. You may think that's the band associated with VFOB, but no, it's not. It's the band associated with VFOA. And finally, at the bottom is a set of menu options which uh, you can execute to configure the controller. So, as with uh, most of our projects, you turn the rotary encoder to change the frequency, push the rotary encoder to change the, the digit, and with this, as you change the frequency, you'll see, for example, we changed outside of the 60 meter band, so now we're in the 40 meter band, and it's automatically switched to lower sideband. And if we were to go and change this again, so right there we're out of the 40 meter band, we're now in the 30 meter band, we're an upper sideband, and notice uh, VFOB has not changed. there we've changed out of the 30 meter band we're in the 20 meter band and we're upper side band and there we've wrapped around we've gone past the uh, 20 meter band and so it's wrapped back around it's wrapped back around to the 80 meter, 80 meter band lower side band and so that frequency is basically the same as VFOB. And again, if we change the frequency, there we pop back into the 60 meter band. Now, if you were to push the select button, you would toggle between VFOB and A. So right there now, VFOB now is at the top that's the one that's active and VFOA is now inactive and if you push the select button again you'll toggle back and forth so the select button toggles you between VFO A and B when the cursor is on VFO and VFO uh, VFOA or VFOB so now to change to go to the various options here we would press the back button so by pressing the back button there for example we're now changing the uh, mode we push the back button again we've popped down to VFOB so here now we can change the frequency of VFOB that is the inactive frequency we can change the band of VFOA and we can change our menu options here if you're if you in the radio mode and you press select it will save all the currently configured parameters here into memory it uh, it auto saves it every five minutes but if you wanted to force a save in radio mode you would just press the select button and it will save it if you press the back button you again you've now wrapped around you've come back to VFOA so if you go into the mode you can use the rotary encoder to change the mode there's a lower sideband upper sideband and then something called TUN which is tune and what TUN does it shifts the um, the frequency into the um, it shifts the BFO frequency and transmit it shifts the carrier right into the um, crystal filter uh, passband so basically the BFO frequency is shifted right in the middle of the uh, passband and it's basically emitting a carrier so in this mode we could use that to for example um, check the output because you'll get the maximum power output coming out of the 
uh, transmitter and uh, as well you could use that to maybe tune a subsequent uh, auto tuner that uh, is between the radio and your antenna and so in receive mode tune you'll just hear gibberish because you've shifted the uh, frequency outside of the uh, crystal filter passband and you'll just hear nonsense probably this will work if you wanted to decode CW so if we push the back button again once again we can change the uh, and notice it changed the bands it, it auto changes the band as we change the frequency for VFOB and again VFOB is inactive we have to press the select button here to make that frequency active so if I was to press the select button see we toggle VFOB and we make it active I press uh, select again and we're back at VFOB and it's inactive so if we press back we go over to the band and we can select which band we're on so for example if we wanted to go to the 30 meter band you would press the enter button the select button and uh, that switches the active frequency VFO a frequency into the 30 meter band it adjusts the uh, mode and we're good good to go at that point now if you come down to the menu options there's a series of menu options some of these apply to the band so some of the uh, menu options will apply corrections to the band itself others will apply globally to all bands so let's kind of go through some of the menu options here so already describe what radio is that's just the default mode then you've got the BFO correction so this is a band specific mode so here you can adjust the BFO for uh, VFO A for uh, this band you can adjust the BFO uh, to correct it so you can uh, either uh, change the frequency up or down slightly so there you're changing it by 100 Hertz or you're decreasing it by 100 Hertz and uh, you can select enter to save the value or if you hit back it ignores the value so the next option is the LO correction and in this case it's going to adjust the local oscillator um, to compensate for any um, not drift but any um, uh, error in the SI5351 so for example I've already calibrated the 10 meter band and I've found that I had to subtract 36 Hertz from the LO to get it to be exactly at that frequency and once again this uh, change applies to only this band so if we were to cancel this and we go to the next option that is the SI5351 correction so here we're going to apply a global change this is a global this is not specific to the frequency but applies to all the bands it applies it's going to apply this correction to the SI5351 and applies to all the bands so in this case um, you can uh, uh, select a value I've, I've already configured it and I know it's 40 and that was done using the Park SIGGEN software which allows you to calibrate it so I know the value from that calibration was 40 and so I enter it here and similarly you can uh, use the rotary encoder change a number press the push button to change it and in this case we can only change the single digits and we can change the tens digits we can't change the hundred uh, digits so let's hit the back to cancel out of this move on to the next so this is the uh, the S meter baseline so in this in this configuration here what you would do you would basically have the SI, uh, the uh, radio 
connected to no antenna. So it basically wants to know a baseline of what the systematic noise, the system noise is. So it's looking at what is the noise level of the radio when there's no signal coming in. And all S meter readings will be relative to that. So when you hit select here, it actually goes, invokes the ADC and reads the S meter value and it's telling you the S meter value is a value of 1. Now this is the ADC value. It's not an S meter value. It's the, the ADC value is 1 count. So if we had a higher um, noise floor coming in, it would uh, be higher. Now this setting applies to this band. This is a band specific setting. So you would need to set this on a band by band basis. So let's hit cancel and uh, or back to go back. So the next is a correction. So what this is allowing you to do is apply a correction to the value calculated to shift it uh, to be uh, at an appropriate level. So for example, you would set your baseline, connect an S9 signal source, feed it into the radio, and you would adjust your pot here on the S meter circuit to try and get it at S9 as close as possible to S9. And if you can't get it to S9, and let's just say it was at S7, you can then invoke this. Oops, went. Uh, so there, you can. You can say, okay, right now I've got it programmed for this band to shift it down by three, which means that I feed a S9 signal in, it's coming out at S uh, S12, and I need to feed it back uh, minus three to get it to to an S9. And uh, uh, so you would do that uh, on a, uh, a band by band uh, uh, basis. So again, this is allowing you to shift whatever reading you can get from the hardware to put it at an appropriate uh, uh, level. And in my case, I use an S9, so I'll, I'll use that value to shift the value to get an S9 signal. Let's hit back to get out of it. So the next value is a forward correction. So uh, in this case, you would enter a value here to get um, your count. So this is so here. You would put yourself in transmit. You would transmit to tune. So it's generating the full output, which is five watts. And then you would. This is the ADC value. It's reading from the bridge for the forward uh, part of the bridge. And so this is the value that's saying it's five watts. So you're telling the system this value is the ADC value for 5 watts coming out. And uh, at that point it knows uh, how to calibrate it. Same thing for the reverse power. If you go forward, you would go to, to the reverse power and you would select it. And uh, in this case, it's, it's reading the reverse uh, power level at 5 watts, again transmitted 5 watts, and it's it's uh, telling you the uh, reflected power at 5 watts, and of course you would have to make sure this is connected to a 50 ohm dummy load, so you're getting almost no power reflected back, and so all of a sudden it knows what the, what the correction is for forward and reverse power, and all SWR and power readings will be relative to that. The last menu option is the factory reset. So if you hit that, it resets everything back to the initial first load state. So it blows away all your configuration parameters and it resets it to the what was uh, programmed into the uh, Arduino code. And if we change this, we go back to the radio setting. So that's about everything that there is in the in the configuration I have 
I've wired in a little push button here which is simulating the push to talk on the microphone so if I was to push that you'll see the TX gets enabled of course there's no SWR because I don't have the radio powered on so there's nothing coming out and that's basically the um, um, push to talk of my uh, microphone so if I was to go over to the tune this is where you'd use the tune you'd set it to tune hit the push to talk and right there it's going to be putting out 5 watts because it's shift that uh, carrier or the BFO right into the passband of the crystal filter and so you're getting the full power coming out of the uh, system. So that concludes this video. I've gone through the various features of the um, Dueling 612's controller and as well as the connections uh, of the controller to the uh, Dueling 612's board.